So I'm Jeff Foley, and I'll be talking uh, or introducing you to the OWASP Mass Project. I'd like to say thank you for coming. And uh, it's, it's definitely good to get the word out. That's, uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. This project was originally started in September of 2017, and it was just as I'll tell you more about later, um, my solution to a, my, my problem, <laughs> which I found out later is everybody's problem. But uh, later, uh, uh, OWASP picked this up, or you could say uh, adopted this project, and that uh, was in July of this year. <clears throat> so as it says here, the focus of this project is in-depth DNS enumeration. So I'll get into what exactly I mean by that. But I also have a focus on network mapping because of how I've seen the impact of being able to visualize and see what you, uh, you've discovered. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am the project lead for this, for uh, a mass. I also uh, work for National Grid. I'm the penetration test uh, and red team manager. Uh, if you're not familiar with National Grid, it's an energy company in the Northeast. I spent many lifetimes ago, or starting to feel that way, <laughs> doing uh, cyber warfare research and development, which I think is what caused me to realize or identify this gap that this project tries to uh, solve. <clears throat> it's the, the importance of reconnaissance in, in this battle space that we're in. I mean, if you don't know your target or you don't know what you look like as a target, you aren't going to be able to defend it, and you also won't be able to assess it. That, that was ingrained into me in my past lives. But I've always enjoyed network programming. That's just uh, what got me into this uh, field in the first place. So I've always uh, felt comfortable creating new solutions that involve uh, networking tools. And in general, I just uh, enjoy supporting the community. I, that's kind of my give back. I try to do that as much as I can. So that this is part of uh, that contribution. So in, ca in case you're not already familiar with network enumeration, there's some interesting uh, definitions out there, but I see this as using DNS to understand the namespace of an organization. That's kind of my quick and dirty uh, definition. And a mass uh, uses that to, like, uh, as I said, understand that portion of the information. In order to get the namespace of your target, it uses uh, DNS records. And it accomplishes this in four different ways that I have listed down here. We, it uses all four of these methods at the same time, brute forcing, uh, name permutation, or names that have successfully been resolved, we per, uh, permute those names or mutate those names. Uh, we do reverse DNS sweeping. That's extremely powerful. And, uh, where we take an IP that we've resolved and then look around that IP for more good names. And then just a lot of scraping the internet, looking for these names everywhere we can I mean, that's how this whole process gets kicked off. So usually people ask me when I say that, well, so what are you collecting or what, what data are you getting from this? I would, I would just call this, this is the kind of like the typical data that you're getting when you use Multigo as well in, uh, for infrastructure. You know, it's the domain names, the subdomain names or host, host names, uh, IP addresses, net blocks and subnets, 
and uh, the ASNs that they belong to. And with that, you can paint a pretty nice picture of what an organization looks like on the internet. Uh, all of this is external, in case it's not apparent already. As of right now, none of this is being done internally. It's to paint a, a picture of the attack surface of an organization. So when I saw how much information this uh, tool, now it's a suite of tools, but how much it can really collect, it became honestly a bit overwhelming. It was, it, it's hard to look at all this in text and make uh, sense of it <laughs> or to see it and say, oh yeah, I see what's happening here. Visualization is extremely powerful. <clears throat> and so there, there's support in this tool suite to take the data that you've collected and visualize it. And it, it can be quite enlightening. You can, you can quickly pick out anomalies or honestly just sloppiness is what sometimes what it looks like in the way that the network was designed or the way it's been uh, piecemealed together. Uh, sometimes you can see what almost looks like artwork and how nice these networks look, how well planned out they seem to be. <clears throat> but it also can uh, quickly reveal relationships between organizations and places that you might say are good targets for further investigation. So to give you an idea of what I mean, I have a few of these images of uh, networks that I've enumerated in the past. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what you're, what you're seeing here is, in this image, in the middle, you have one domain. And the green nodes represent names, or subdomain names. And the, I guess we'll call them orange nodes, are IP addresses that those names resolve to. And on the outside, you have net blocks that those IPs belong to. And these yellow looking nodes are pointer records that also point to those names that then resolve to the IP addresses. That, that was acquired during uh, reverse DNS sweeping. Just uh, in case this isn't already clear enough, I have one more example where it's a very different looking network, I think. Although I've seen some very uh, strange <laughs> examples, but this one obviously is broken up into more segments or pieces of their network, or ha they have more ASNs that they're uh, assets uh, exist on and things like that. <clears throat> but I thought through these two examples you'd get a pretty good idea of at least what so far uh, a mass generates when it creates these network graphs. It's also capable of feeding Multigo, which I'll tell you in a bit it is, uh, has a little bit of a play in this story of how this all began. So I like this uh, <laughs> picture over here. I think it's a, good, it's a good way to really quickly say to someone, why did I do this? I mean, how many people in here have had a uh, conversation with someone where they said, uh, do you have a network diagram? And they looked at you like, ooh, well, I don't know if our documentation is up to speed. <laughs> yeah, right? We got quite a few people nodding here. Yeah, so I was going through this again and again and again. And uh, I just honestly got tired of asking and figured it would be better if I just came to the conversation <laughs> ready to say I, I already know. But I have to say, uh, it was not as easy as I had hoped it, it would be to get a, a complete picture of uh, their exterior. And sometimes they wanted me to sit down with them and, and uh, show them, right? So I, brought, I took Maltigo out and I wanted to be able to pull up what they look like to an adversary on the internet. Only again, it was just too much of a, a workflow to get this to, to happen. There was too, too many tools involved, uh, too many techniques to try to build into this in order to get the results. <clears throat> there wasn't just one place, so to speak, where you could get a complete solution to get it 
hopefully as many answers as possible about their uh, attack surface. So when I realized this, I figured, well, this is a problem, because not, not only is it a problem for someone that's sitting down with a customer and wants to show them, but what about all of our pen testers and red teamers who should be doing this all the time in order to have a clear picture of their targets? And the tools were the same for, on both sides, so to speak. There, everyone was, uh, did not have the right solution. So I guess I, co I covered some of this just now, but if you, if you previous to, uh, to a mass, if you looked at, well, what was your, what did you have to do to, to accomplish this? You had to have a large collection of tools that were out there. I, I just call them like niche tools because they kind of each handled uh, a slice of the problem. So that's why you needed them all. And you had to put them all together into a rather complex workflow that, uh, brought all the names together, you know, made, uh, only used the unique names, then tried to do alt names on these names and run them through a resolver, and then you had to do this several times in order to get the cyclic r relationships that existed, and it was a, a nightmare, actually, and I think some people like Jason Haddix uh, agree, since he's quite a expert on this topic, but he'll, as of his latest uh, bug bounty hunter methodology, he'll tell you that he doesn't have to do it anymore because he has a mass. I mean, that, that's what the point of this was. It was, it, was, it was too complicated to get what I consider to be a necessary phase of this work accomplished. And just to be clear, what I mean by complete tools, don't, uh, not, to be, not to mean literally complete as in all the answers, but just complete that all the techniques are in one place or a lot of the data is being collected in one place. Uh, there's, there's no perfect answer to this problem because when you're on our side uh, where it's not your property, so to speak, you can't know all the answers. I mean, it's not likely. So I'm not claiming that this will give you every single answer that's out there. It's, it's just perhaps the closest thing that, to it. So when I started this, the, the way I was looking at this is a lot of these uh, niche tools that were out there were only passive and they only looked at a few data sources. I mean, these things pop up all the time actually. You see uh, Twitter get blasted with some new tool where they look at three different data sources and say, yeah, and we put them all together and then print it out and we're, uh, we're amazing. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's what Sublister did for a long time, although, although I'll say it did a better job than that, but still it just, went out to a handful of data sources, it collected it, printed out the unique results. This is not just passive enumeration. It can be if that's all you want, but this tool will do active and passive methods. It will start by collecting all the passive data, but that's really just the beginning. That's the starting point. And then it goes into what I would say is more like a gray area where you're doing DNS resolution, I think there's a debate whether that should be considered passive or active. <clears throat> but if you want active methods, it will then go into attempting zone transfers, it will uh, grab uh, certs right off of their you know, web uh, servers, it, it does brute forcing, name alterations, d reverse DNS sweeping. It, it does anything really, at least that I've been able to think of so far, that will get us more names, more of the answer. And if you have better ideas, please join the project because <laughs> we're always looking for more. But um, yeah, my, my outlook on this was do whatever it takes to get all the answers. I mean, that, that's what I was trying to create. And also, you utilize all the resources out there. <clears throat> A lot of these tools don't, uh, only use the resolver that your machine is using right now. I saw that as a little silly, especially if you're gonna be doing this amount of work, you should be able to identify the resolvers you want. And if you're not sure, then at least, you know, what I do is I provide, I think it's uh, six high performance resolvers that uh, the work is spread across. 
which usually, at least in my experience, has worked very well. But it, it could be thousands, literally, if that's what you want. If you want to use thousands of resolvers, it will. And so far, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this one yet. I'm, I'm still on the side of what it says right there, but I'm, I could be swayed. <laughs> but so far, I've had the attitude that I do not want anyone that picks up this tool to have to sit there and say, oh, now I, now I need to go get API keys. And now I need to fill out a config file full of API keys. I, I didn't want to have to do that. I didn't want other people to have to do that. So, so far, I've made it so that the only data sources we're using are ones where we can get the data without API keys. I, I am willing, I think, to change my mind so that if you would like to be able to, and you feel like you're getting less because you're not able to use your API keys, then we can roll that in. But the default, I imagine, will remain no API keys required. So this right here is an, I call it the Alton sweep. <clears throat> it's an example, I would say, of what happens when you're bringing all these techniques into one place. It's, it's an opportunity, really, for this cyclic relationship to show up between these techniques. So in this case, alt is the alteration of uh, resolved names. A lot of times that's just like number flipping, really pretty simple uh, tech, uh, methods. But it works really well. It's amazing how many names show up when all you do is say, well, we found this one, let's just throw a one in front of it. Or we found one with a number in it, let's take the number out and see if that one resolves. And when it does, a lot of times, it ends up somewhere like a subnet that you haven't seen before. Wow. So then when you sweep that subnet, you find all, you know, a handful of new names. And the process continues like that again and again and again. <clears throat> And that can go, if, depending on how exposed, I would call it, uh, an organization is in their D, on their DNS, that process can go on for hours. I've seen it. I've seen like a university that's pretty much opened their, you know, the truth to what's inside their organization uh, on their DNS. I've seen that go on. You know, I have to go find something else to do while the enumeration completes. And when I come back, I have thousands of names and IP addresses. But that same relationship shows up between um, some of these techniques and brute forcing when you're doing recursive brute forcing. It shows up with, with web scraping when you're scraping subdomain names as well, not just the domain name. The, these relationships are built into the architecture of this tool where they feed each other, I guess you, is a good way to put it. So a lot, of, a lot has happened in the roughly one year that this has been around. I, I've had a lot of people, it, it seems evident a lot of people are using this. I've had a lot of people ask for improvements on it. We've, we've been encouraged to keep working on it <laughs> by the user community. And where we are right now, I would say, is I've had quite a few people come up to me. When I first started this, maybe backing up would be good. <clears throat> I came, like I said, from a world of cyber warfare where you could say my priority was stealth over performance. So when I originally made this, I kept it low and slow. That was kind of my feeling about it was that's the right thing to do. But it was quite clear that, first of all, that didn't work too well for a lot of people using it that didn't want to wait very long for an enumeration to complete. Especially like bug bounty hunters and people that are on a tight schedule to get some of this work done. Also, the truth is, when I, when I made things go faster, nobody seemed to notice. Like I was expecting throttling to start taking place and you know, a lot of websites to start you know, not responding anymore. And, and some do, but it, it was not nearly the response I expected. There, so I think the quick answer is like no one's paying attention is what it seems like. <laughs> not, not a good thing, but you can go very fast with this now and uh, no, it doesn't seem to have an impact on uh, your ability to get the, the work done. So 
uh, back to the where I was with this. Some people have come up to me and just said, look, I love this, but I need it to go faster. So, all right, I said, then let's do it. Let's uh, forget the low and slow, we'll, we'll crank it up. So now, at least where we are with it at the moment is that for every resolver you give it, it's watching the maximum that we can keep pushing that resolver without it going over a certain error rate. And as long as it's staying under that and it wants more names, we'll keep shoving it more. I mean, it's just, we're keeping this thing working as hard as it can, pretty much. Most likely what will happen now is you'll tap out your, your max upstream wherever you are before you irritate these resolvers. That's what it seems like. At least that's what happens where I am. Is I hit my max for how much I can send out. So another thing people have um, shared with me is, actually I think someone in the back here just mentioned it uh, before this started, is you know, they want more control over the enumeration. They want to be able to say, well, I'm only looking at this slice right now, and I, I'd like it if either I only got results for that or, um, I mean, it's a little hard to say you won't look outside those areas, depending on what kind of enumeration you're doing, but then that's just it. Some people have also said, well, I'd like to be able to say we're only going to use these techniques. Okay, like we can do that. So some of those things haven't been priorities before they are becoming priorities now. Also, I've noticed, and some other people have come to me saying, well, if I run this four times, or three, you know, pick your number, you know, I get four different results. Now, to some degree, I feel like that could be improved within this tool. Other uh, reasons why that tends to happen is just because things change out on the internet and it's so dependent on the data sources that it's using. But there are, there is room for improvement to have the results more consistent. So we're working on that. Uh, we want more package management support. We want to get this easy to install in more places. Uh, I've, I've had a snap package for a long time. I've had a lot of people tell me that's great, but it'd be nice if we had other packages for other pl platforms making this simple for everybody. Because one thing I haven't mentioned in here Perhaps it should have been the first thing since I'm a big Gopher fan, but this is all written in Go. And you'll, you'll see a little more about this later. Uh, so if you already have Go, then this is trivial to get on your machine. It's when you don't and you don't want to that now the packages start becoming important and things like that. Uh, yeah, so that, down here, we definitely need more uh, documentation. We need more media. We need just more exposure. Uh, I get a lot of questions, the same questions about what is this and how do you use it right and things like that. It'd be great if we just had more YouTube videos and things that would help people out. And of course, we're looking for more and more contributors because we never seem to have an, <laughs> a lack of people asking for more features or more capability. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. So uh, those, are, those are the current goals of this. Uh, project. Let me make sure I didn't, yeah. Right, so if you're interested in that, there's um, a couple things I'd like to say. One is, of course, you can reach me on Twitter, you can find me on dis uh, our Discord server, and we can talk about what makes sense for your, your contribution. But I get a lot of people saying, well, I, I'm, not a, I'm not really a Go programmer, I don't know if I can help. Yeah, you can. There's, I have people already on this project that they have never used Go before, but they're really good at like network troubleshooting and things like that, and they have brought amazing value to this project already. It's been a pleasure having them on board. So there's many ways that you can help with our testing and um, those things, those goals I mentioned uh, on the last slide about consistency and uh, also all these data sources. You know, one day it's working, the next day it says, we think you're a robot, and it's like, oh great, now we gotta, <laughs> we gotta fix that. So the, the, it's constant maintenance on this project, but we're gonna do it because it's needed. And if you wanna be part of that, then there's lots of ways you can contribute. Also, like I said earlier, we need media. We need more, uh, help the users, help, make a, help us make packages, help us make videos. 
documentation, any, anything to get the word out, make this easier for people. Yeah, and of course, last I put, if all these don't seem like you, but you would like to donate because you see the, the purpose in this uh, project, then of course, please do that. You can always uh, donate to OWASP and then say, attention, please give some percentage of this to the, uh, the mass project. Some future directions for this project. So I always say to people, no matter whether you have something good to say or bad to say, I, need, I wanna hear everything. I need feedback. We need to hear how this is working for people. Um, I need to hear those stories like we were using it and it just would have been great if it did this, but it didn't and it made it a little harder for us. Like I need to hear all those things so we can aim our energy because there's lots of things we could be doing, but I'd like to think we're being responsive to this community or the people that are relying on this every day. I see hundreds of people cloning this project every day. And I mean, so clearly there's a lot of people using this and, and I'd like to think we're staying on top of their needs. Also, I personally really believe in the network mapping focus of this project. I've, I mean, maybe I'm a more visual person than some people, but I've gotten so much value out of being able to take the data and then see it. And I plan on taking that further. Uh, also, I didn't mention it here, and because I'm planning on putting it into a different uh, talk, but we also can take the data and put it into graph databases, which I kind of think as network mapping as well. Obviously, it's not visualization, but it does allow you to save it and now investigate the data, <clears throat> which has been also extremely powerful in my experience. Like right now, we support putting this into Neo4j and there's some amazing queries you can do on this to learn things very quickly about the networks that you're uh, enumerating or discovering. So we're, we're gonna expand those things. We're gonna keep supporting more databases. We're gonna keep trying to make it easier to visualize the data. Also, uh, I guess uh, this one kind of goes with the database piece a little bit, but yeah, we're gonna keep uh, being able to work with more tools. Like, I also get people saying, well, what about taking what you're finding and then making it easy to bring it to the next tool, like, you know, the next phase of what they're doing. And I'm all about doing that. I don't, I don't wanna make this any harder than it has to be for anybody. So when there's opportunities for integration, I see that as, that's great, let's talk about it. And uh, of course, as you can see, I said there's a lot of high maintenance pieces of to this. There's gonna be things about this that always remain on the roadmap, just maintaining the data sources and keeping it doing what it's been doing well already. All right. Assuming the network is still behaving well. Could be. Yeah, I had planned to um, show a live demo here. Let's see how well it treats me. All right. <clears throat> now, one thing I, I'd like to show This is now a, this was once just one tool. It's a suite of tools now. So when, when you install this, you end up getting, at least right now, it's, it's these tools here. Because it's, it's too much to roll into one tool. It gets, it's too messy in my opinion. <clears throat> so there's what I call a mass proper. That's kind of like the original tool. It's the one that's doing the, the discovery. There's the Multigo transform, which right now is just a local transform. We're probably gonna ex expand that in the future. Uh, there's the database handler that takes the data and then converts it over to the database. Uh, there's the visualization tool, and then net domains, which I, I wanted to show a little bit about that because that can be pretty powerful at the beginning of your workflow for this. 
So if, if you're starting off where you're just saying, well, I have no idea where to begin. They, they haven't told me anything about this organization. I, so wh what do I do? You can begin with that. There's an option for this. There's a lot of things you can do with this, actually. It's, what it, the purpose of this tool is, is to make it so you can shoot at, it could be an org name, it could be an ASN, it could be a sub, um, subnet, it could be an IP address. And the point is to be able to say, give me all the domain names that are hosted there or that you can find there. Because that way you have those names to begin the process with a mass. But I like this org feature. Again, when you have no idea what you're dealing with and you just want to say, you know, what ASNs have, you know, what does Facebook have, for instance? And you just fire this. Like I said, we'll see how the performance uh, treats me. All right. <clears throat> so it comes back and says, well, it found three ASNs that Facebook has. Now, maybe if you Googled that, you only would have found one. You know, maybe you would have found one and said, oh, good, and then started. But I like how this says, well, no, there's, there's three. And you can give all three of those now to some other uh, flags on this tool that will then start sweeping those networks looking for uh, certificates. Uh, it'll do like reverse uh, DNS lookups. It, it will attempt to get the names off the network if you're willing to be that loud, I would call it. If you're comfortable with that, then that, that's your starting point. Because then once it comes back with the unique domain names, that's what you can use to begin with a mass. So let's assume that happened. And now we're using a mass. And I'm going to say, show us all the, be verbose, show me like the data sources, show me the summary at the end. I want to see the IP addresses, and this time though, I'm only I'm just going to say um, OWASP.org for several reasons. One is it's probably more appropriate. Also, <laughs> it's uh, smaller, so this will happen quicker. But this this is a very typical uh, I would say use right here of a mass where you just say I just show me everything you find out, and uh, here's my domain that I want to look at. There's other interesting options. I would encourage you to go look at what they are. Some, like For instance, you can turn on the active flag, which will, like I said earlier, cause it to be a little bit more aggressive and reach out to the target organization. Uh, it, it kind of does anyway in some cases, but it's definitely more loud if you turn on the active flag. And it also will sweep wider areas when you turn on the active flag. But what's going to happen right now, now that I just hit enter, is it's going to go out to all the data sources looking for um, OWASP.org. And it's going to start bringing those names back and resolving the names. And I'm, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to start these cyclic processes where uh, the names start, you know, the IP start feeding other things and they just keep rolling and rolling. I mean, keep in mind, too, this is going on without brute forcing. I didn't turn brute forcing on. I could have. Again, I'm trying to save us some time, but so this is what, what you get. It says, here are the data sources that I found these at, here are the names, here are the IPs, and at the end it will say, here's how many we found, here are the methods that found them, and here's the ASN net block breakout of where these names existed. Of course, keeping in mind, all this is just a, f a format that over the year this has been going on, people have said, yeah, this looks pretty nice. It makes, makes it easy for me to do what I need to do. If you really want all the data, you can just save all of it, like every single DNS record that it finds and it is processing during all this, which then feeds these other tools like the, the DB tool and uh, the visualization tool. For instance, I saved a few. So in here, let me bring this up. Is everybody able to see this pretty good? Yeah. All right. So in here I have uh, OWASP.json. And as I uh, showed earlier, we have this a massive uh, visualization tool. So real quick, 
you can see that it takes in with the uh, dash i the op what I what I call this data operations JSON file where it's dumping all these operate data management operations uh, when it's performing the work and then you can tell it and give me uh, these different formats or ways of looking at the data so what we'll do is we're going to say take in the OWASP JSON file and give me this uh, D3 file. And then if we open it, let's see here. Oh, we don't want to do that. You want to look at me. Let's see here. It's been a little. I think that'll work, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so keeping in mind, of course, like we, I already said, this is a small network, right? You're not gonna see anything too amazing um, on here, but it's still pretty interesting because these are these are interactive network graphs, right? So if if you're really doing investigation or discovery, this is this is an amazing ability, I would argue, because it really lets you take the data and not just print it out, but really look at it and say, what is this? You know, and start digging into it. You can say, well, that looks interesting. What's that name? And you know, it'll tell you, well, it's a subdomain name. Here's the name. Here's where we, got, where we obtained it. And it'll show you, oh, and it had a reverse DNS record. And <clears throat> you can sit here and play with it, look at it. Also, you'll see if you do this, there's structures in these, um, let's just call them, we'll just say networks for right now. There's, there's structure that shows up when certain services are being used and uh, they have relationships with other businesses and you can start to just see it. You can look at it and say, you know, I bet that's Google Mail or, you know, you can just, because it all starts to look the same. And it, it becomes easier when you, when you do this quite a bit to, to look at these and just start understanding what you're looking at, even before you're looking at the names and things like that. Because that's why earlier on the slide I said the structure or lack thereof of structure is extremely powerful, I think, in analyzing these networks. Also, when you have a lot more data, <laughs> of course you could have gone through all this and looked at every single one of them and that wouldn't have been a problem, but when you have thousands of nodes, it just becomes w far too unreal, you know, no one's gonna look at all that, right? Unless you're just gonna grep it or something like that, but of course you could be missing things that way. With visualization, you can actually look and see the parts that appear interesting and start digging further. So I would encourage you to try this, uh, you know, shoot this at something that you feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all legal, but... Um, <laughs> Shoot it at something that uh, you feel comfortable doing, uh, enumerating, and, and take a look at it. I mean, I, I've also noticed that, in general, universities don't seem to care, right? I, I've asked them, I've tried to be reasonable about this, and, uh, you know, they say, ah, we don't, we don't mind. We're, we're very open about our information. So anyway, I'll, I'll get off this, but I definitely like the, uh, the visualization. Let's see if I can bring this back. All right. So, of course, then usually people end up saying, well, so where, how do I go get it? So the, up here at the top, you have um, the, the OWASP uh, project page. It's a good place to start if you just want to know, look, you know, get the latest information on news about this or, I mean, that's where we're gonna be dumping all of the updates about this project. But if you wanna go just to the software, uh, that's the GitHub page. And that's where a lot of the instructions are for installing this and using it. Like I said earlier, if you have Go, pay close attention though to the wildcard at the end there. You definitely need to put that in. <laughs> 
because there's a lot of parts to this and it needs to know you want all of them. If you try to do it without it, you won't be very happy. It won't build you anything. But that's uh, your uh, command right there to get it through uh, Go. As I said earlier, if you have Linux and you can use Snap, I would encourage that. It's extremely easy. Uh, I've also given instructions on the GitHub page on how you can have like a Kali box and then get Snap working on it. Because lots of people said, well, I, I want this on Kali, but you know, I can't install it through Kali's uh, repos. Well, you can still get the Snap. It's not that hard. It's really simple, actually. And then we try to be good about this last one. I've failed lately because there's been a lot of changes and it's been a little bit of a pain to keep up with uh, making all these new binaries. But generally, we keep uh, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and FreeBSD binaries. Uh, with the releases. Although lately, FreeBSD uh, so, uh, has been nice and included this in ports, so I'm not really sure we need to be making FreeBSD binaries any longer. They've kind of uh, brought this in, so that's, that's great. And with that, opening it up for questions. You want to Who is, uh, do you find is primarily using this tool right now? Is it red team, blue teams, or like bug hunters? That's a good question. So I've had a lot of people talk to me about using this that I get the feeling they're using it for companies that are collecting this kind of information and selling it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get a lot of bug bounty hunters, right, that are right. clearly using this. Uh, they say it saves them a ton of time. Uh, I, I don't get a lot of pen testers, I feel like, uh, because I think maybe their work is very scoped and like they're, they're already given a lot of this information. So I, you know, I hear them say, well, we're not doing external this week, so you know, I don't need it. Whereas uh, a red teamer, I hear them using, using this all the time. I've also had a lot of people from the OSINT community tell me they're using this, or threat intelligence that are trying to like look people, look you know, actors up right. using this uh, tool. But also, I've had people from uh, the blue team tell me that it saved them tons of time where they said, you know, normally I can't get anyone to give me this information in my organization, and I need to know, though. You know, I need to know where we are or what we're protecting, but I can't get IT to tell me, or they, they don't have the documentation or something like that. And in that case, they said this has been a lifesaver. So actually, I in earlier you probably you know you met, noticed me say that I've sat down with customers that want you know I said do you know what you look like to the adversary and they said no can you show me uh, so I think everyone wants to know right everyone needs to have a clearer picture of this no matter what your role is but hopefully that answers your question though yeah thank you. Anyone else? Do I know how many people are working on this? Now, the question was how many people are working on this? I have several contributors. They're in several countries. <laughs> so it's been interesting that while I'm being called for dinner, you know, someone else is being called for putting the kids to sleep, things like that. But um, uh, yeah, I have, I would say, about five contributors that are on this right now that are doing what I was talking about earlier, the development and testing and you might say that the expected uh, kind of work, but we really need more people that are looking at other, like the awareness piece of this, or getting the word out of the marketing. Well, just because I have so many, I run into so many people that uh, say they haven't heard of this, even though there's a lot of, there's really, it's really easy to find. And also I mentioned to someone, I did a, a talk on this in London, and now there's more people paying attention to it there than in Washington, D.C. Like, okay, so clearly we need to get the word out. You know, we need to go, with it, go there and bring it to them.
All right. Thank you.